The film begins by narrating a chilling tale from 35 years ago in the quiet town of North Vernon. In October 1987, tragedy struck when Tiffany, a young girl, was brutally murdered in her garage on her 16th birthday. Just two days later, Marissa faced a similar fate at her family's cabin. The eerie pattern continued on Halloween night with the grisly death of a third victim, Heather, in an amusement park parking lot. What connected these horrifying events was the unsettling detail that all three girls, aged 16, were stabbed exactly 16 times. The perpetrator became known as the Sweet 16 Killer. However, after these events, the killer stopped all the murders and vanished without a trace. His identity was never found out. Eyewitnesses say the killer always wore black and a unique mask. Because of this, he has become a cult figure and kids wear his outfit every Halloween. Enter Chris Dubassage, a local who hosts a podcast about these events. Each Halloween, he guides visitors on tours to the murder sites. This indicates that he is obsessed with the Sweet 16 killer. Meanwhile, in a different part of town, Jamie, a teenage girl, prepares excitedly for a Halloween concert. Suddenly, her mother Pam appears, expressing concern and forbidding her from going outside. Pam, who was close friends with the three girls murdered in 1987, remains haunted even after 35 years. Despite her fear, Jamie insists on attending saying she can take care of herself. Just then, her father Blake arrives and offers to drive her to the concert. Later, Blake takes Jamie to her best friend Amelia's house. There, they join Amelia's mother, Lauren, who happens to be an old classmate of both Pam and Blake. Lauren shares her frustration about not getting a break from work even on Halloween and heads off to her job. Following this, Blake accompanies the girls as they head to the concert. In the meantime, Pam is home alone when a masked man shows up at her door. At first, she thinks he's just someone dressed up for Halloween and offers him candy. But when she spots a knife in his hand, she quickly shuts the door and calls the police. The man breaks in and attacks her, but Pam fights back. She's been preparing for something like this since she was 16. After a bit, she grabs a knife and warns the killer that the cops could show up any moment. This makes him nervous, so he decides to leave. Just as Pam breathes a sigh of relief, he unexpectedly reappears from behind and strikes her. He continues to stab her exactly 16 times until she tragically succumbs. In the aftermath of her mother's death, Jamie grapples with profound shock and devastation. The following day at school, the police arrive and ask about her father's whereabouts during the murder. They theorize that Pam and Chris were in a secret affair, and when Blake found out about this, he murdered his own wife. However, Jamie denies the accusations, asserting that her father is innocent. After school, she attends a science fair, where her friend Amelia is engrossed in a makeshift time-traveling machine. Amelia discloses that her mother, Lauren, had once worked on a time travel project that remained unfinished. Now, she wants to use her old notes and complete the device. Amelia only has one goal, to travel back in time to October 1987, the time of the initial murder, and prevent the killer's actions. The next day, Jamie confronts Chris at a cafe, directly questioning if he was having an affair with her mom. However, Chris denies this, clarifying that he and Pam shared frequent texts due to her deep commitment to solving the serial killer case. He further reveals that Pam received a death threat note from the killer 35 years ago, foretelling her as the next victim. In the next scene, an annoyed Jamie returns to the science fair to meet her friend. But as the girls are talking, the killer suddenly arrives there and starts attacking Jamie. Scared, she immediately runs away and seeks shelter in the time machine. The killer also goes after her, but when he tries to stab her, he inadvertently plunges his knife into the time machine's control panel. Miraculously, this brings the device to life and activates the time machine. Jamie is then teleported back in time to the year 1987. She arrives on the exact day the murder took place. At first, the teenager is terrified, realizing the gravity of the situation. 
but then she remembers that she has to save her mother, so she proceeds with her mission. After a while, Jamie reaches the nearby school where her mom once studied. She tells them she's a student from Canada and quickly gets in. At gym class, Jamie is surprised to see the three girls who were killed, Tiffany, Marissa, and Heather. She also meets her mother Pam, who's totally different from what she thought. Pam turns out to be a bully, who always acts like she's better than others. Later, Jamie finds out about Tiffany's birthday party that night, where something bad is supposed to happen. She tries to tell the girls it's a lame idea and they should cancel it, but they don't listen. Getting frustrated, she goes to the local police for help, warning them that there's going to be trouble at Tiffany's house. Strangely, the cops just laugh and say there's never been a murder in their town. Left with no other choice, Jamie starts looking around the school for Amelia's mom, Lauren. Once she finds her, she explains about the time machine Amelia will invent in the future. She also warns Lauren about the upcoming murders. Surprisingly, Lauren believes her because no one else knows about the secret notebook and her plan to make a time machine. Jamie adds that the only way back to the future is with Wi-Fi, but since it's not a thing in 1987, she needs Lauren to figure out another way. Back in 2023, Blake is going nuts. He's frantically looking for Jamie and talking to the cops. Out of the blue, Amelia walks over and spills the beans that Jamie time-traveled with her time machine. Nobody believes her, but Chris is kind of intrigued by what she's saying. Meanwhile, back in 1987, Lauren and Jamie hit up Tiffany's birthday bash to stop the murder. There, Jamie spots a good-looking dude and instantly crushes on him. But shockingly, he's none other than her dad, Blake. To top it off, Tiffany and Blake are a thing, and Jamie's parents haven't even started dating yet. After that, she tries her hardest to keep the three girls safe, but they're not having it and just keep teasing her. Later, Tiffany goes upstairs with a guy for some fun, but she has to dash to the bathroom. When she comes back, the guy is vanished, and out of nowhere, the killer jumps from the closet and brutally stabs her. After a while, Jamie arrives at the scene and discovers Tiffany's lifeless body in her parents' bedroom. Even though it's terrifying, Jamie realizes she's changing things. In the regular timeline, Tiffany was found dead in the garage, but now, in this new timeline, it's in her parents' bedroom. After that, Jamie and Lauren walk Pam home so she's not alone with the killer on the loose. When Pam asks how Jamie knew about the murder, she says she's psychic and predicts who will be killed. They then decide to stick together for the night, and Jamie asks Pam if she knows anyone who might want to harm them. Pam confesses that many people could be the killer because she and her friends have bullied a lot of folks. Following this, we're again taken to the present, where Amelia is working on her time machine, determined to bring Jamie back. Suddenly, Chris pops in and wants to check out the time machine. As they chat, Chris realizes he's got the murder details wrong. Tiffany was killed in the bedroom, not the garage like he thought. Turns out, Jamie's actions in the past are messing with the time stuff. Amelia and Chris then check a 1987 photo and discover that Jamie's indeed time-traveled. In the past, Jamie tries to stop the gang from going to the cabin where the next murder will happen. She talks Marissa into going to the city instead, and they end up at Marissa's parents' condo. Unfortunately, it turns out to be the same cabin in the woods where Marissa died. Jamie freaks out and tries to get them to leave, but the guys show up, and they decide to party at the cabin. Later, when Jamie tries to lay down some safety rules, one of the guys gets annoyed and locks her out. Desperate to get in, she looks around and finds a window. When she peeks inside, she notices the killer murdering Heather. Unfortunately, this messes up the order of the deaths, as Heather has been killed instead of Marissa. Later, Jamie contacts the police and provides them with DNA samples of the killer. However, to her bad luck, the cops aren't aware of what DNA is. In the aftermath of this event, Jamie becomes resolute in catching the killer. Along with her gang, she decides to use Marissa as bait, as she is the last one who's going to get murdered. The group then prepares themselves for the plan. The movie shifts to Halloween night, and Marissa is casually walking through the amusement park. Unbeknownst to her, the killer quietly trails behind. She goes into a haunted house where the rest of the gang is nervously waiting for the killer. 
Before long, the bad guy shows up, and there's a face-off with Jamie and the others. Right when he's about to hurt Jamie, one of her friends sneaks up and fatally injures the killer. They then take off his mask, and surprise, it's their classmate Doug. Following this, it's revealed that a year ago, a student named Trish died in a car crash. It turns out Tiffany, Marissa, and Heather caused it. They bullied her, called her Fat Trish, and one night, they got her drunk, trying to make her spill secrets about a rumored affair with their coach. Unfortunately, the poor girl got so wasted that her car skidded off the road, resulting in her untimely demise. What the bullies didn't know was that Trish was dating Doug. He was affected so badly by the incident that he put on a mask and went on a killing spree. When Jamie learns this, she's mad at her mom, Pam, thinking she was part of it. But the latter says that she wasn't at the sleepover because she had a fight with Tiffany that day. Marissa also confirms that Pam is telling the truth. Hearing this, Jamie's confused about why the killer threatened Pam and later killed her in 2023. As the girls continue discussing, another killer shows up out of nowhere and murders Marissa. He then follows Jamie and kills Chris's dad, who was live on TV. Meanwhile, the girls arrive at the time machine and try to enter it. But the killer also shows up, and a fierce altercation ensues between them. Fortunately, in the end, the girls emerge victorious and subdue the killer. Right after that, Jamie takes off the killer's mask, and it turns out to be Chris from 2023. He's not the original Sweet 16 killer from 1987, but he did murder Pam. Chris confesses he did it to keep the fear of the serial killer alive for his true crime podcast. He got tired of living in his successful dad's shadow, so he killed him too. He gave Jamie a fake note to make his podcast more dramatic, but the first killer never planned to hurt Pam. Saying all this, he attacks Jamie, but she easily takes him down with a nail gun. Now that the entire case has been resolved, she goes back to the present. In the final scene, Jamie arrives one day before Halloween of 2023. To her delight, her mom is still alive. The only person who remembers everything from the past is Lauren, who explains that this timeline has altered slightly due to their past actions. She reveals that she has now become a bioengineer, while Chris has relocated to a monastery in India.